Would you like to learn how to get an LMS text using Cypress? Well, let me show you. Welcome to Atomy Now. This is Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. And let me go ahead and walk you guys through the scenario that we're going to be automating in this case. So here I have the Automate Now sandbox page. This is a place where you can come in and play around with your automation skills. In our case, we're going to navigate to this page and then select this button that says Tables. We're going to click that, and then we're going to pay attention to this text right here. All we're going to do is to validate some of this text, and we're going to check that this text, Item Prices, is part of this element. Now let's go to the code. And this is the spec file that we're going to be using. It's called Navigation. I already have a test here that I've written in the past. So let me go ahead and create a brand new test for this one here. We're going to start a new test here. We're going to say it. Let's give it a title of click tables. Now we're going to write the body of our test. And first of all, we need to navigate to the sandbox page. So we're going to say cy.visit and then we're going to use single quotes and a forward slash. And this is because I've configured my test to navigate to the sandbox page automatically. If you would like to learn how to do that, check out the video card on the screen. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to click on this button that says tables. There are a couple of ways that you can click on elements using Cypress. We can try to find a locator for this element, such as CSS locator, or we can use the elements text to locate the element and then click on that element. That's the strategy I'm going to be using in this case. So I'm going to find the element that contains the text tables, and then I'm going to click on it. So let me go ahead and say cy.contains. Now this contains is going to return the first element in the document that contains the given text. And in our case, we need to say tables because the button contains the word tables. So here I'm going to say tables. And to click on an element, we simply use click. So here I'm going to say dot click. Now, once we click on this element right here, we're taken to this screen. And now I want to validate this text in this element right here. So we need to inspect this element. So let me right click and say inspect. And notice that this element contains an ID. We can use this ID to locate the element. So let me go ahead and grab this. And this time I'm going to say CY. And instead of using contains, I'm going to use get. We use get when we want to locate an element using a given selector. So here I'm going to pass in the selector. And since this is an ID, I'm going to use the hashtag and then the ID. Let me go ahead and remove this apostrophe here and also this part right here. I just need the ID itself. By the way, if you would like to learn how to build your own CSS locators, check out the video card on the screen. And once we have located this element, we now want to validate a given text on that element. So here we're going to say dot should. And then in quotes, we're going to say contain dot text. And notice that IntelliSense is telling you exactly what this is going to do. It says that the targets typed, in this case text, should equal a given string. Now we need to tell it what that string should be. And here I'm just going to say item prices. And just as a reminder, this is the text that we're validating, item prices. And that's all we need to do in order to validate an element's text. Let me go ahead and save my work and run this test. In my test runner, I'm going to click this spec file to run the tests. And since we have two tests in this test suite, it first runs this test, navigates to sandbox page, and then it runs the second test that we just wrote, click tables. And notice that our test failed. Let's find out why this test failed. It says click right here. It failed when it tried to click on the element. And notice how clearly it states what happened. It says the element is being covered by another element. So we're trying to click on tables, but it's being covered by some other element. If I hover my mouse over this, you can see on the right what is happening. Let me go ahead and pin this right here. And notice that we have this Automate Now logo overlapping the button that we're trying to click. And you may be wondering why this happens. The reason why this happens is because Cypress automatically scrolls the elements into view before interacting with them. So we've told Cypress that we want to click on this element. 
But let me show you one thing. Let me unpin this right here. Notice what happens when we visit the website, the sandbox page. If I put my mouse over this, if you look on the right hand side, we see that the tables button is not fully displayed. It's only partially displayed over here. So it then moves to this command contains. And notice that it scrolls the page and it puts that element at the top of the page. But now that element is covered by some other element. And we can see that here when we navigate to the sandbox page. And notice that as I scroll here, this automate now logo stays pinned to the top of the page. And as we scroll, notice that the tables becomes overlapped by that logo. And that's what's happening. But thankfully, Cypress offers a solution for this. We can tell Cypress to forcibly click on that element. And what do I mean by telling Cypress to forcibly click on that element? Well, Cypress has total control of the browser because it's running within the browser. And even though an element may be covered by some other element, Cypress is still able to interact with that element. So we're going to make a minor change to our test. And right here, when we click on the element, we're going to use a force click. And for that, we use braces and we say force colon true. And this tells Cypress to click on the element no matter what. Let me save my work and rerun the test. And this time we got a passing test. Let me go ahead and open this up. And notice that it was able to scroll to the element and then click on it, despite the fact that it was being overlapped. And here we see the assertion. In this video, I showed you how to add multiple tests to a test suite. And in case you're not sure how test suites work in Cypress, check out the video card on the screen so you can learn more. Thanks so much for sticking around. I'll see you guys in the next video.